बंदे मातरम गुड मॉर्निंग इस सॉलिटरी सेल इस सॉलिटरी सेल दैट इज द टॉपिक ऑफ द डिस्कशन फॉर दिस ग्लोरियस मॉर्निंग इस सॉलिटरी सेल आई थिंक हियर लिटिल बिट ऑफ कंफ्यूजन इट अराइजेस अमोंग अस व्हाट इज दैट सॉलिटरी सेल there itself sometimes may be so far this is this yogic experience is concerned we will be thinking of the time period that is right around uh, 26th november 24th november 1926 just imagine around from now around 100 years back <coughs> when sri aurobindo actually arrived that over mind consciousness siddhi de this over mind consciousness from there onwards till he left his physically but physical body he dissociated himself from this earthly embodiment died at will that is on 5th of december 1950 i think approximately it is 24 hour 24 years he laid confined to a single room no external movement you have seen very much confined very much contented mixing with a very few people i think you will be thinking around that period and that chapter interestingly you may not claim it that is actually a solitary cell because mother was going it was spiritual experience he did the things and moreover he attended that over mind consciousness and he was on his way through sadhana through this adventure of consciousness and joy towards the supramental level so exactly if we claim this is a solitary cell it is a, maybe a mistake for us but what really i want to quote that is the solitary cell regarding the prison experience prison experience at the alipur there itself i am trying to focus there is also some spiritual and the inner difference how how that time 24th november 1926 onwards till uh, his withdrawal physical withdrawal during that period on that day onwards you can find he became he attended the spiritual consciousness over mind consciousness i want to say exactly over mind consciousness that siddhi day he attended the level of over mind consciousness and that change was great he scanned the secrets of the over mind he bore the rapture of the over soul just imagine he scanned the secrets of the over mind he bore the rapture of the over soul beyond mind beyond soul a borderer of the empire of the sun a borderer of the empire of the sun what he did attuned to the supernal harmonies already again and again upon i have told you two beings he was one wide and free above and another second it's a person here bound struggling intense it's person here that time that time he was so great so fast his actions framed the movements of the gods his finite self mated with the infinity so he was secluded in sickle cell and his will to cup the reins of the cosmic force his reign is the mother itself and here i am not going to focus on that period and that particular time but i am interested in telling you the solitary cell that is of the prison experience i will i think you are little bit uh, well aware little bit aware or well aware because regarding his prison experience that's what i want to quote upon i want to focus upon um, that period and to what was his experience how the things were going on what was the life there because one thing i want to clarify right now before starting 
He is the further supreme. These are the these are the things that is there. They are the least concerned. They don't take a greater role there because they are supreme. They are above beyond all. They are above all, untouched, incredible. But the thing is, as they were doing the human lila that the play, for that actually they were the creators of the nature's process, nature's rule and regulation on the whole. On the whole, they were also respecting that. That was the going on. That was the thing we have seen before us. We have predicted. We have analyzed. Now itself we are also discussing. During the imprisonment, Sri Aurobindo was at first lodged in a solitary cell. Lodged in the in a at first in a solitary cell. What was the size? Nine by six. Nine by six. Which served as bathroom, dining room, toilet, all in one. Dining room. Just imagine, bedroom and a toilet simultaneously. The size one is nine by six. But afterwards, transport to a huge room where lived with the other prisoners in the case. So that solitary room, Sir Bindu, I have seen. I think you are well aware of this this um, scenario. How the life was going on there in a ceiling gills nine by six room, entire things, all the activities, everything was confined to the single solitary cell. Later he was actually shifted to a room, and she was he was sharing with some case burden people. Then we'll go. You can say these are culprits because this is a political impeachment, engagement. English people they were treating like anything. So this is what this was the really happening. And after the assassination of the approver, however, after the assassination of the approver. All the prisoners were confined in a separate cell again, first in a solitary cell. Then they were shifted to somewhere in a, to a huge room. And the latter, they stayed. They were confined in a in a separate cell again, separate cell again, and met only in the court or daily exercise. But they could not have the freedom to talk. That's why we call it a solitary cell and solitary life. They could be able to meet in some common uh, platforms like exercise in the court where their trials were going on, but they could not talk during that period. So almost life was solitary, solitary, and seclusion. That is, I think, uh, that was the need of that time for the great soul like Sri Aurobindo. For others, it was a matter of concern, cause of concern rather. Sri Aurobindo spent almost all his the time in reading Gita and Upanishad. Ordinarily, what you feel? Ordinarily, what you feel? That is a different issue. People have don't have anything to do. They don't know the way of life. They are go. So they lose. They spend. They spend their time like anything. Hurrying. Jabhiyali, uh, they spend their time. But for Sri Aurobindo, the great soul, the great Mahayogi letter, you have seen. The supreme mental avatar, the immanent of the supreme, the man of future, the supreme mental being, being, going to uh, manifest himself in the supreme through the process of supreme mental manifestation. So here he was engaged in reading Gita and Upanishad. He carried his yoga in here, in his yoga, even when he had to live with others. Live with others. If on more than one to two people meet, they simply they waste their time in simply gossiping. But uh, despite all these hurdles, obstacles, drawbacks, difficulties, he is carried on his yoga and staying amid others also, and uh, accustomed himself to meditation, reading Gita and Upanishad, doing the yoga. And accustomed himself to meditation amid the general talk and the laughter, because it is you know it is a jail. You don't have anything freedom. You are confined. All are like this. People for all almost equivalent. So there is what he was doing. <clears throat> Every when people were engaged in laughter, talk and laughter, playing games, much noise and disturbance during that, people just imagine. He was interested. He was engaged in this meditation, concentration, yoga, and you know, reading Veda and Gita and Upanishad. 
that glimpse have been glimpsed and uh, analyzed by our Lord in his own language, I want to say how Sri has quoted his experience and all. I was taken, I was taken to Alipur and placed in a solitary cell. I am not taking, telling about that solitary cell. Sri Aurobindo himself has described joyfully, jovially, very interestingly, he accepts this is a solitary cell. Not only the solitary cell, but it is absolutely it is a solitary cell I was kept there. There I waited a day and a night for the voice of God within me. Can you imagine being convicted or to be convicted? He is forced and taken away to the Alipur jail. There itself he is telling, I was waiting to know, to hear the voice of God who is within me. To know what he heard to say me. This is the greatness, magnanimity of the Lord. To know what he had to say to me and learn what I had to do. That command, that voice I was awaiting eagerly. But to know what he had to say to me, the voice of God within me, and what I had to do, all these, uh, you know, instructions will come. For that actually I was waiting. I remember that a month or more before my arrest, a call had come to me to push aside all the activities before going to jail. I remembered a month before my arrest, there was a beautiful voice that was a, that was a very awakening voice, advisory voice. That voice could have told, you are going to be arrested, you move up somewhere else. Or at that time you go to Pondicherry. But actually instead of all that, that voice came, reminded, here in the course I remember that be prepared, you learn, you do, that uh, pull aside all your activity, whatever activity you are involved in, you shall try to put them aside, to go to the, into seclusion and look into myself. Here in the new, had the voice, got the instruction, indication he got, and he decided to go into seclusion and, uh, you know, look into his self. I, I could not accept the call, that was the problem. Sometimes, sometimes outwardness can't uh, understand all this language. Even preparation also may not be that much sufficient, but uh, I don't want to, clearly I, want, I don't want to have any comment upon the Lord because I am a mind, I am living in my mind, surface mind and he is super mind. I am simply less than a man, but he is a superman, so unable for me. It is totally unacceptable. I do accept in my free language, free words. Can't express, can't comment. But still then what is written, I just want to quote before you. I could not accept the call. Means put aside all your assignments and be prepared for seclusion. My work was very dear to me. Very lovable. Whatever, whatever I was liking, I was doing, I was that was fascinated, that was attracted. That much I was, I was enjoying, dear to me. He spoke me again, that, again that voice. For the second time that voice was uh, hard, you know. His second time. But he spoke to me again and said, The bonds you had not the strength to break. The bonds you had not the strength to break, I have broken for you. I have broken for you, just remember. Just remember. All that denies must be torn out and slain. All that denies must be torn out and slain. And crossed are the many longings, not one or two, many longings for whose sake, longings. We lose the one for whom our lives we are made. Our lives we are made. But the thing is that, we are not appreciating, we are not accepting through our groping or surface conscious consciousness that is confusing us and derailing us. But Sri Aurobindo told, the second time, that hour, that was a very commanding voice. The bond you had not with the strength to break, I have broken for you. I had another thing for you to do and it is for that I have brought you here to train you for my work. To train you for my work, 
जस्ट इमेजिन यू हाउ कुड नट बी एबल टू ब्रेक इट डाउन अर्जुन यू कैन रिमेम्बर दैट कुरुक्षेत्र महाभारत यू आर यू आर आई वॉन्ट वेज एन यू आर एंड श्री अर बिंद श्री कृष्ण वॉज ट्राइंग टू एडवाइज एक्सप्लेन दैट वॉज नॉट ऑल्सो पॉसिबल फिजिबुल फॉर दैट एक्चुअली दैट विश्व रूप परिकल्पन दैट वॉज टू बी दैट वॉज रॉप टू बी सो टू अर्जुन लाइक दिस Initially, that work, that job was so dear to me. I was not interested to leave. And the second time, it was crossed, broken up. Second, it was broken up because I have that command is very interesting command. I train you to do my work. You are not here to do your job. You don't. You can't go your own way. Choice is important. It is no, not no choice for you because you have come for the. Special mission with a special vision. I have broken the contact, and I had another thing for you to do. One thing is over. You you rise up to the level or on the ladder, ladder, the second level, another level of consciousness. I have broken for you. I had another thing thing to do for you to do, and for that I have brought another thing for you to do, and I have brought you here to train you to do my work. But whilst I was waiting, Sri Aurobindo quotes a greater physical and mental distress. Sri Aurobindo quotes here. I call upon the God with eagerness and intensity and pray to Him to prevent my loss of intelligence. To prevent my loss of intelligence, sometimes our intelligence is intermixed. It is the having somehow mixed. It is misguiding us, misleading us. So what have you happened, Sri Aurobindo quotes? I call upon the God. With eagerness and intensity, and pray to him to prevent my loss of intelligence. It is going down. It is on the way of shatter, getting shatter. It is way getting wasted. That very moment there was a spread. There spread over my being such a gentle and cooling breeze. He is praying. I am losing my memory. Memory loss is there. Loss of intelligence. That time he can feel. He can also feel, but thing is that you are unable to uh, remember. That is the problem. So what happened? A gentle and cool breeze. The heated brain became relaxed. I was then the heated brain. Just imagine, I was under stress, relaxed, easy, supremely blissful. Such as all, such as in all my life, I had to known before. Because this idea, this realization was not with me. Cool, relaxed, devoid of thought, devoid of any anxiety. I was not concerned over myself. That breeze cooled and the cool breeze blown towards me and touched my head, and I was relaxed, absolutely relaxed. From that day, all my troubles of his life were over. He, he, he could take, be able to take. He managed. This was not my head. That day, in a single moment. Had given my inner being such a strength and these sorrows, no sorrows. I got the inner in my inner being the strength and the solace. Did not leave my trace of or top. Did not leave any trace of or top. It was possible to live happily during the long solitary confinement. Long solitary confinement. I lived happily, merrily, without any anxiety, without any. Trouble without any difficulty. I was living in my solitary confinement. That is, uh, that was uh, that was a uh, long. But I lived happily since that day. Since that uh, touch, I could be able to understand what really the touch was. I also realized the extraordinary power and the efficacy of the prayer. Every time we can, we are praying, but the thing is that we don't know what really we are doing. Then, Sri Aurobindo quotes, "A prayer." A master act, a king idea, can link man's strength to a transcendent force. Can link man's strength to a transcendent force. Then miracle is made the common rule. Every day we keep praying, but thing is that there is absolutely no result, no outcome. We don't get anything feasibly. Our mission remains unfulfilled. Our dreams are getting shattered. Brain is getting lost. But prayer, it is having a big quality. But we don't know what to do, how to pray. That's why for that actually the Divine Mother has prayed 
because for the divine mother these prayers are not actually i don't think that much essential or something but actually the prayed how to pray she was ready to teach us how to pray how to what is the what are the steps how to do how to perform that's why it was in the courtyard of the alipur jail during the hours of working that a new and a marvelous experience came during that uh, period when i was mo- moving in the courtyards of the alipur jail during my working during my working not mine but the lord's working he was having a marvelous experience that was really really great in the ordinary world in the solitary uh, feelings i can't express what really it can be but really that was uh, on explainable i can't explainable in inexplicable i can't explain really tremendous so about this solitary experience experience i think you have gone to some uh, how you know and this is the great realization from the lord and this was not for him this was for the upheaval of the human society for the upliftment of the human race for the upheaval of the suffering world for that actually the lord suffered for us but what we have given in in form in return the eternal suffers in a human form he has signed a salvation testament with his own blood but we are incapable of understanding his sacrifice that is supreme sacrifice that is the problem with us now probably time is knocking at the door and we have to take a break still till the next class we will come forward with one new topic with a newer consciousness and with a new atmosphere with all new eagerness and anxiety let us wait for that and now it's time to bid you a farewell take a leave thank you vande mataram